Well, welcome to our talk studio, and we're happy to have with us to discuss this further Sakaja Johnson from TNA, and also with us, Cord uh, Franklin Beto, of course, in charge of the elections. Um, gentlemen, let's let's jump into this straight away, and and let me ask uh, the question everybody's asking: Are there favored children in this process? Are there sacred cows? Is this about minting money mm. for your different coalitions or parties? Explain to people what's going on, and especially because of the inconsistencies we're starting to see that might emerge when, for instance, Cord talks about um, uh, you know joint nominations in certain places, or TNA has spoken about zoning um, of certain areas. Let me start with you, Sakata, please. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I'd like first to start off by saying that um, as a national alliance and indeed as a Jubilee coalition, we have committed ourselves to ensuring that we rewrite the narrative that has been in political parties, that nominations can never be free and fair. We, have, we are committed to ensuring that this process is actually free and fair. How do you do that? By ensuring that the entire process is open. What we is have the opened, process? We have opened the process to our aspirants and it is very clear. One, our nomination rules are online for everybody to access and all the candidates have these rules. We have set up county nomination advisory boards that have been set up by the aspirants themselves. And everywhere we're doing nominations, the aspirants themselves have chosen those people who will sit in those boards. And before we sign any certificates, we will not sacrifice at the altar of greed or the altar of expediency the right of our members to choose the, the, the leaders that they want. So that is a process that we actually have in place. I'll come back to you on the issue of zoning. Uh, Franklin, what's going on in court? What's the process? Um, I, I want to say we have purposed ourselves to conduct a free, fair, and transparent nomination exercise. How do you do that? We have put in place our rules already before the candidates, either way, from uh, WIPA, from ODM, from uh, Ford Kenya, they all have got our manuals containing the rules of the game. And uh, the other question you asked earlier on was, I want to firmly say that we will be firm and fair so therefore, there will not be sacred cows. There's another name used. Yes, favored children. Favored children. Favorite children. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish I wish to add, there will be no royal cows. Okay. Okay. We yeah. are placing everybody on equal uh, terms, an equal play field, and uh, we are insisting. That is the game. Gentlemen, it's easy for you to say that. And the fact that there's transparency is important so people know what the rules are, are informed, and are able to act if they feel that something is going wrong. But there's the question of money and the ability for people to use money to manipulate and get the nomination that they're looking for. Could that happen? There's also the question of leadership and integrity. And already we know that in your offices, in your admin offices, people have gone in and threatened your staff. And, and, and it's, it's serious. Even death threats are being issued by people who are insisting they must get these nominations. How are you dealing with those issues of leadership in, in, and integrity and, and the use of money to manipulate this process? We have said um, for one, as Jubilee Coalition, that we must have in place systems that do not disadvantage those who may not have millions of shillings in their accounts, but have millions of ideas. There are many people who want to be leaders, but may not be able to afford the rigors of a campaign or be able to bribe their way, as it has been in the past. That's why we have put in place checks and balances. We have different, at different levels, we have organs that actually check the entire process, such that you cannot compromise one individual and think that you'll be able to get away with the nomination. We have the County Advisory Board, we have the National Elections Board, we also have a dispute tribunal, which um, is indeed the entire process before you are able to be cleared um, as, as a candidate. So we must make sure that we stand firm on that commitment to ensure that there is no neither direct nomination, no favoritism, whoever you are, whoever's friend you are. And the only thing even I can assure my friends is that you will not be rigged out and we will not sign a certificate for somebody who has not won the nomination. I think the other thing also I must clear, Julie, mm -hmm. is this issue of zoning that has, has come out. Um, I was like coming to that. Okay. I will be Good. I'll give you a chance Good. on that in just a moment. Franklin, in, in the last election, we saw some people get nominations by just running, <laughs> throwing <laughs> the competitor to yes. the ground and running yes. to the... You yes. remember all yes. that. Yes. Um, what, what, what do you have in place? We have court? said, and we continue to say, which I think uh, my friend Sakaja is also saying, violence is no option to leadership. Mm. 
leadership that is acquired naturally is the leadership that will stand the test of time. It is the leadership that will give benefits to the people. But leadership that is acquired using force or using money, it will evaporate in the sense that that person, when he gets in, he will be simply saying, I earned it. I didn't work for it. So we want the public to fully participate in the nomination of their leaders. How so we are asking the aspirants mm -hmm. to go by the rules. Go by the rules. They are contained in the rules and regulations of nominations as prescribed in our pamphlets, which have been sent out across okay. to the people. Like as Akacha is saying, yes. it's online. It's so online, yeah. we are asking our people across the country, let us observe sobriety. And society will not help us. We are adapting on our part as code the system that is being used by IEBC. We will only be selecting a few of the polling stations as prescribed by IEBC. We will not take all of them, but we will take a few, and I hope at the end of the day, we will be sharing them out with the TNA, yeah. URP, so that we are not in the same polling stations at the same time. Okay, yeah. okay, Let, let's come now to the zoning issue, yes. uh, Sakaja, and, and the fact that, uh, you know, how do you justify who, and, and you know, the interesting example is the Sunkuli brothers yes. who are running for senator <laughs> in Iraq. You've got Julius and Andrew Sunkuli. You've got the, the two parties in the coalition. And how, how do you deal with a situation like that? You need the wisdom of Solomon to try and... True, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not an easy process, but um, mm. at the onset I'd like to clarify that in the TNA URP agreement, which is in public record, it's available at the Registrar of Political Parties, there is no word like zoning. We are not zoning any areas for any of the parties. But it's been what we have agreed. What we have agreed mm -hmm. is that um, to be able to use resources in a, in a good way, that TNA will handle the nominations in certain areas, and URP will handle the nominations in certain areas, but they will be joined. If there is a URP candidate in an area that is dominated by TNA as it is, they will have a right to come to the ballot, they'll have, they'll have a right to vie, and the person who will win will take the day, and vice versa. And if, the pers and, and, and if somebody wins in that joint nomination, they will be able to get the certificate of the party that sponsored them, of their mother party. Okay, because so it's about the financing. It's, it's, about, it's, 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 about, it's about, about logistics. It's not about carving out the country and saying this zone is for this party, this zone is for this party, because that is not unconstitutional. Either way, the constitution of Kenya, which we abide by fully as Jubilee, Article 38 states very clearly that every Kenyan has a right to choose which party to run on. And the civil and political rights that um, every Kenyan has, and it's an inalienable, inalienable right, actually guarantees you your right to vie on whichever party you want.